Morning, it's the 2nd of January, two o'clock in the morning. So I was down here New Year's Day and I'm still here now. Uh, and I'm in the workshop, fucking about with the cars and other stuff to basically make videos for you and to do it in the very little time I've got when I'm not actually doing proper adult shit, basically. So uh, today, this is a video basically showing you the fucking nightmare that this car's been. And it's, oh fucking hell, it's still mad. It's still not right now. It's getting there, but it's still not right. Right, this is the car, as you have probably seen in the previous video. Well, the intro video. And the uh, the previous one when I was wired in a diff. It's a Volvo 940 Turbo. Originally built as a drift car. And then wasn't used as a drift car for ages and now I'm reusing it as a drift car. It's on 5014 Enkai Fancy Wheels, Enkai Racings. It's, it's a good spec car. It genuinely is a good spec car. Unfortunately, while I thought it was only needing a few minor things, like the diff needed rewilding, I wanted to change the bucket seats and that's about it. In reality, it has been a fucking nightmare to the extent I don't think I would have bought it if I'd have realised, but tough shit now, I'm stuck with it. So, uh, yeah. First thing I did, as you might have been able to tell if you've seen this car and before I bought it, is it's not covered in fucking scene stickers anymore. As funny as some of them were, and it didn't look too bad, it actually looked pretty cool as things like that go. Um, I'm not really into stickers, so uh, I fucked them all off and now it's basically just a red Volvo 940 Turbo. Um, yeah, it took me forever to take the stickers off, they were a nightmare, but there you go. And the one on the spoiler actually wasn't a sticker, it was painted. So uh, yeah, I had to literally paint over it, but yeah, whatever, it's done now. Uh, the problems, well, it's, it's mostly under the bonnet. It's the uh, two litre red block Volvo engine, turbo of course. Um, it I bought it with the eBay T3, T4 turbo. It's got Astra VXR injectors, which I think are like 440cc or so standard. You know, three bar, but the, the fuel pressure this is running, which is four bar, it should be like 540 cc. Um, front mount intercooler, blow through three inch math, um, induction kit, blah blah blah. Nothing much. It's got um, it'll add an adjustable fuel pressure regulator, an eBay one. It's got a three inch exhaust, and yeah, it was the guy reckoned it was making about 250 brake at. 20 psi felt at least that really it weren't too bad and uh good times unfortunately on the way home i actually had a look at the afr meter which is inside the car aem one and it was running wow well, too lean for my liking so i thought oh that'd be an easy fix it was also stalling a lot when i um when i took it for test drive but you know I, again easy fix i thought unfortunately it wasn't anywhere near as much of an easy fix as i thought in fact it was a fucking nightmare basically pick a hose any hose vacuum hoses breather hoses everything uh even the v-band clamp on the uh turbo to downpipe it was all either loose or leaking or just just everything a fucking nightmare good job i got a smoke testing machine um, so I could smoke test it to check for leaks because uh, otherwise you'd be there forever. Even the breather system was connected to the inlet manifold but without any kind of one-way valve. So boost or whatever, well on boost air was going straight out into the breather pipe. Off boost it was just sucking it in even on a closed throttle. Yeah, no wonder it was idling like shit. Um, First, one of the other things I did to check the, well, to fix the idle 
was to swap the idle speed control valve for a brand new one I just happened to have. It's just a Bosch one is used on this, same as on loads of Vauxhalls and BMWs and all sorts. And it was only after I plugged the new one in and it made no difference, I checked, and there wasn't even any power going to it. It was basically doing nothing. So I blanked it off completely and I adjusted the um, actual throttle stop at the throttle body and now it doesn't stall at all. So um, get rid of all the leaks plus that and it's, it's fine. The biggest run-in problem was the fuel pressure regulator. It was a eBay special adjustable thing and it was making the car run like absolute shit. And when I uh, pressure checked it and checked the gauge and all like that, it was basically fucked. It, it couldn't um, hold a steady pressure. It was just all over the place. So just to you know, be 100% it was that, I went down the scrapyard and nicked the standard regulator for one of these and refitted that. And suddenly, car drove lovely. Um, so yeah, most of the running problems it was having was that regulator. Unfortunately, the standard pressure is three bar and it seems to have been mapped for four bar. So I, again, although it was running lovely, I couldn't run it on boost because it was just too lean. So I got that radium, fancy flashy radium, regulator I got that off a mate of mine and fitted that and now it's running four bar it's weird though because I've tested well going by the fuel pressure gauge it doesn't really reduce much under vacuum it's possible it's just because the fuel pump which is a Roger Clark Motorsport 340 litre per hour one which I fitted in the tank replacing the original setup which again was fucked and just awful um i completely redid the fuel system um it's entirely possible that just flows so much that um basically it's impossible to get the pressure much lower than what is set at i'm not sure but it doesn't because it should go back one psi per one psi vacuum and it sure as shit don't it goes back a little bit but it seems to go up one to one with boost so whatever um, well, I think it does. <laughs> I redid the boost pipes a bit because they was all some weird convoluted fucking mess. Made it a lot straighter and smoother. I made a decent, almost solid metal turbo inlet pipe to a bigger filter than it had. The original set wasn't bad, but this is better and it cost me nothing because I had it kicking around. Um, I changed the plugs to... Um, one heat range colder they're sevens now there was sixes when i got the car and i closed the plug gaps up it's about twenty five thousand now it was about thirty two thousand before um there was no misfire problems but this is much more suited to the uh the kind of boost and abuse it's going to get but yeah um the blow through math is another thing i wondered if that was the issue with the uh the fuel in running lean but it must be mapped or set up for that because when I put it back to before the turbo, it ran like shit. I mean like proper shit. It um, it was pretty much flat 10 AFRs everywhere. It was almost undrivable. It, I just took it off because it, it just doesn't hardly even run. That's the thing. This has got some aftermarket chips in it. What they are though, I don't know. I'm wondering if... It was set up for with the chips for a standard size or relatively standard size turbo because then because what it's doing at the moment and it's still doing it now and it's doing my fucking head in because i just want to drive the thing properly is the initial bit of boost it goes mental rich i mean like pretty much flat tens which is way too rich and it's not great for performance and then as the boost rises and as the revs rise, especially over about 4,000 RPM, it leans out to too much lean. I would say by five grand or so, it's um, mid 12s, which is borderline dangerous. And I saw as high as about 13 by five and a half or so, and there's more RPM to go. It should, 
when this thing runs nice, thanks to the bigger turbo, and it's got a different cam in it as well, only a, a Volvo V cam, but it's better than standard, this thing seems to rev out nicely to like six and a half grand. But it can if the fucking fueling's on the piss like it is at the moment. So yeah, I'm wondering, because it's rich at the first and then leans out at the top end, is because it's been mapped for maybe those bigger injectors, but a standard small turbo or something, a TDO4, because that would make sense because the TDO don't need much fuel, unlike this one, which comes into his own at high end. So it leans out. And again, because this is a bigger turbo wheel, bigger compressor wheel, everything, this for any given amount of boost will be flowing more air. So again, it's entirely possible that it's mapped for what a pissy little TDO4 would do. And um, yeah, I think that I don't know much about these cars. I must admit, like I've had about six of them, but I've never bothered getting serious with the tuning on them. So I'm not the most familiar with these fuckers yet. Um, so I'm a bit up in the air. I mean, fueling wise, they've got a mass sensor. It definitely picks up something off a lambda sensor as well. I'm not even sure which one of the two lambda sensors as that one and one under the car is for the ECU and which one's for the um, the gauge in the car. I haven't checked yet, but whatever. But I don't think it's got a map sensor, but it's annoying. I mean, I'm down back down to actuator pressure at the moment. So it's only running about 15, 16 PSI, not the 20 odd it was running before. But it's still too fucking lean. And this is fucking me off because this car should be a weapon. It's got a fuel pump good enough for it. It's got plenty big enough injectors. At this pressure, that's like 550cc injectors. Well, 540, I think they'd say. So, yeah. It's got the potential to be like a 300 brake car at least. And a, and a nice revy 300 brake car. But instead, it's a piece of shit. It just leans out. And it's just really annoying. People have said, oh, like other owners of these have said um, the ECU is like self-learning and tends to make these things go rich after a while, no matter what's done to the ECU. But this end, this is going the other way around. This is going lean. Too lean. I won't give a fuck if it tried to richen it up, but it's not. It's, uh, it's It creeps up 12s, 13s at high revs. And so I've never even managed to take it to the fucking rev limiter. So, because I don't want to break this fucking thing straight away. I want it to live. I bought this car to use, not to tune. But instead, I've uh, all I've done is work on it. I'm not convinced the standard coil's up too much. But again, it's not misfiring, so fuck it. Apart from that, it's a good car. Um, I'll tell you what else I've done. I'll show you. Is the seats. Shit out of the way. Yeah, when I bought it, it had um, Cobra Monaco's in it. I mean, it's got like nice steering wheel, hydro, whatever. But I had Cobra Monaco's, which is like like the Fisher Price My First Bucket Seat type thing. They're fucking terrible. Um, Monaco's, they're not very supportive because they're quite wide and baggy. And also, they are rock solid, like the most uncomfortable seats in the world. Like, they're just terrible. And I think it must probably put people off bucket seats because they get them on their first experience with buckets and they're so shit. They're like, oh, bucket's too uncomfortable. I can't have them again. But in reality, a proper rally bucket seat, race rally one, is lovely and comfy. And these ones are the motor drive ones, which I had in the Subaru drift car. And I basically swapped them for the uh, Monaco's. They're on the standard runners, but sit really low because I've modified the shit out of them. Um, sit lower than the Monaco's did. They were on some kind of custom subframe. And I say custom, it was the welded together bits of shit. But this is um, now fully on a modified original frame with sliders still work. And yeah, they look cool. They're comfy. They're good times. The final thing I've changed is the exhaust. Wow, the tailpipe. 
it had a three inch side exit from the get go, but just because I'm a bit of a dickhead and like things like that, I changed the, uh, the tailpipe to a race cat, which is like what rally cars have got. They've got uh, the cat as the tailpipe, which is why they've often got glowing tailpipes and stuff in uh, rally footage. <laughs> so much I don't know how well you can see well actually quite well but yeah it's like a hundred cell or two hundred cell or something um race cap yeah let's put the light behind it so yeah that is some sort of uh DIY heat shield that I've made it's made of an aluminium exhaust shield plus a turbo blanket I chopped up because these things get fucking hot I mean like I've seen that glow red hot after a drive so uh, yes it's uh, it needs it to not melt everything um, but yeah it is what it is at the moment and what it is is a fucking nightmare I just want to use it and instead it's a fucking tragic piece of shit um, yeah if I could go back in time I wouldn't even have bought it but I've got it now, so. But finding the actual solution is a bit blood out of a stone because this, although this uh, this engine management is surprisingly capable, people have done like 500 odd brake on it. It seems the UK knowledge of it is uh, low, to say the least. I've had some strange information. And because it's not just something I can easily just plug into a laptop and see what's going on, I'm not 100% exactly what the faults are if you know what i mean i'm just going by my own experiences and knowledge of tuning and cars running like shit to sort of work it out but um and i don't want to go to aftermarket management because i only want like you know this car 250 frame of brake would be fine i don't need fucking a different ecu that costs me thousands i just want this to run right so uh, yeah this is the car, which is a fucking nightmare. And um, that's about it. See you later.